prostate cancer um, has, the face of prostate cancer has changed. Used to be perceived as an old person's disease. That's not the case anymore, is it? Well, that's a very excellent question. We see a lot of young men that come in with this. And when we see prostate cancer among young men, I'm glad you brought this up because there are even very aggressive prostate cancers that we see. So when U.S. Task Force comes in and says no PSA until the age of 50, I think that's quite dangerous. And you're going to see a lot of men in the early 40s that are going to just go on without screening and then they find out that the cancer is spread. So what I recommend to people is get your PSA at the age of 40. It, you're right, it's not an old man disease anymore. Mm -hmm. And when you find it early, the cure rate is very high. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why, the reason, why, because of the fact that there are no symptoms, mm -hmm. silent killer, screening plays a huge and vital role. The PSA test used to be notoriously inaccurate. Is that still the case where it had a high level of false positives? Well, that's true, but PSA, there's almost an art to really take care of the PSA because it stands for prostate-specific antigen, but it doesn't stand for prostate cancer-specific antigen. So what is prostate? So enlarged prostate, inflammation or prostatitis, prostate cancer itself, all of them can, can lead to an elevated PSA. It's my job as, as a doctor to really detect What's the size of the prostate? Is there a nodule? Is there a family history? How aggressive is it going to be? The speed or the trend of the PSA? And then decide, does this patient need to get a biopsy or not? And, and, and so there's an art to it. And not every elevated PSA means biopsy. Not every prostate biopsy means cancer. And not every cancer means surgery and radiation. That's why, by the way, it's a very exciting field because everyone has a different treatment and different path. Right. That said, it, it, to a, the casual observer, it appears that prostate cancer is on the rise. Is that a fact or is that not a fact? Well, it is true that the incident is around like 230 to 240,000. About 30,000 men, unfortunately, as a result of this. And I always say that they don't need to die. Mm -hmm. A lot of this watchful waiting and active surveillance, unfortunately, can lead to, to metastasis. You have mm -hmm. to be very careful. We're finding out the prostate cancers because more and more people are aware of this screening. They go get tested, and maybe that's why the numbers are going up. Is it environmental? Is it genetics? Is it something in our diet that's causing more of these cancers to come? It's hard to know, but the numbers are out there, and it's, it's scary. What's being done on the preventative front? We've certainly seen what goes on uh, behind the scenes and some of the cutting edge treatments uh, that seem to be making some inroads. Is there something on the, on the research front that's indicating perhaps we nip it off at the cost? It doesn't keep you in business necessarily, <laughs> which might be a good thing. Absolutely. Uh, uh, but that's certainly, the, the, when you see the numbers correlating to that and an and increase in it, you've got to say, where's it coming from? Well, certainly there's a lot of genetic testing that's coming and playing a role. And it would be great to see if two patients come in with, let's say, low-risk prostate cancer, one of them is going to have a more aggressive disease and the other one is going to have a real indolent, slow-growing. Okay. Now with this new genetic test that's coming in, to decide who is really at risk, who should we operate on, that's mm -hmm. going to reduce the number of surgeries that we're going to do. There are some urine tests that's coming in, the PCA3s, that would determine who should get biopsy and who should not. So we are getting more and more of these tools coming in our field and, and adds more to what PSA had to offer in order to decide exactly which way we're going to go. I think the future of, of PSA and prostate cancer is going to be involved in more genetics and imaging tests, sensitive MRIs that would tell us is there a cancer or not, the location of them, and maybe we just go after those areas and not remove the prostate. So it's a very mm. exciting field.